Today's video is presented by our newest sponsor, Aura. We will tell you all about them later on in today's video and the exclusive deal they're hooking you guys up with. But we're going to begin with the trade rumors, the, I don't know, just hype, excitement, speculation around Debo Samuel. It's back once again after Debo and Dak were pictured together at the Mavs playoff game. We'll get to that photo momentarily. And you know by now that that means the Debo hype train is back on the menu. Other important background information here is this, that Samuel is not present at voluntary. OTAs for the 49ers after he requested a trade before the NFL draft. Niners had offers. They said no. And then Debo lets this photo get put out there. It is Dak and Debo. Look at it. Look at the way Debo's looking at Dak Prescott. You find someone who looks at you the way Debo looks at Dak. It is not an accident that this photo got out there or that Debo allowed it to go. He knows what he's doing. Linking yourself to the Cowboys getting photographed with their franchise QB? That's not an accident whatsoever. I, of course, put this out on my Twitter. Niners fans have found it. They are very upset and bothered by it, which I find quite funny. But remember, don't get your hopes up. We know how things go here for the Dallas Cowboys, and we know the rules of connect yourself to the Cowboys organization. We are going to spend plenty of time on this, and Deion Jones. We'll get to him later on in today's video, but Debo does know what he's doing. There is a reason why, go way, way back when to a video we talked about weeks, months, I don't know, time's weird when you have a six-month-old at home. Uh, he liked that video, the photo, the Photoshop of him in the Cowboys jersey right? And it is Debo Samuel. So yeah, I would love to find a way to acquire him. Doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to get my hopes up on that standpoint. So do you want to trade for Debo? We, as I mentioned, are going to talk a lot about the pros and cons and why I'm not getting my hopes up. But be the optimistic Cowboys fan here. Do you want to go out and, tr and trade for Debo Samuel? Type in Y for yes, you do. Or you can type in N for no, you do not. I'm going to make this question the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here while you're watching on YouTube, take advantage of it. While the ad plays, head down there and spam your Y for yes or your N for no. Remember we talked about with the Robert Quinn idea, right? There are four elements to any potential trade. Is the player good? What's the cost in a trade? What's the cost of the contract, be it an extension of the current one? And is he a fit or need? Well, the first part, is he good? The answer is, yeah, duh, he's really good. Debo Samuel is not just the uh, web back or wide back or the uh, what Tavon Austin was supposed to be player. He is a great pure receiver. Over 1,400 yards last year, playing with the likes of Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. Yes, there's a lot of yards after catch involved there. He is a playmaker. And he did get involved at several key moments with the ground game, as I'm sure all Cowboys fans remember after that unfortunate playoff result and game there. So Debo absolutely checks that first box of, is he a good football player? There's no doubts about that. As for all of the receiver trades we saw this year, I do think Debo is up there with the best. Not quite the Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill level, but still good. And that's why I think if you are lucky this is the trade package it would require you to send off to obtain Debo Samuel. A first and a third round pick. Those values, not accidental. It's exactly, the picks at least, not the numbers involved, what the Eagles gave up to acquire A.J. Brown, plus a four-year, $100 million deal, which we'll come back to more in depth in a little bit. But that's expensive for an organization that does not like to invest a lot at the well, big-time player levels that aren't on their own roster. So I want you to be honest with me, and the answer is it should be very low, despite maybe Debo's best efforts to link himself to the organization. What is the percent chance that you think Dallas actually goes out and trades for Debo Samuel? Drop that percentage for me in the comment section right now. I am very happy to tell you guys about Aura, the newest sponsor here at Chat Sports. Aura is a simple all-in-one online safety tool to help protect your identity online. That includes financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online device security for yourself, and up to five 
and m members, perfect for me with a wife and newborn at home. And Aura is offering you a free 14-day trial when you go to Aura.com slash chat sports that link will be in the comment section and in the description and you'll be surprised and shocked how often and frequently your personal information ends up online or there's a data leak or whatever i know my credit card has been hacked multiple times through no fault of my own by the way before i got started with aura they help you track your finances and set alerts for suspicious activity and it's a free 14-day trial that you can cancel at any time. So there's really no reason not to protect your information. Head over to Aura.com slash chat sports today to get started. Let's look now at the contract side of it for Debo Samuel, right? Expensive. You would have to at minimum pay him $25 million per year. Is he worth that? I say absolutely. Can the Cowboys afford it? Also, absolutely. Would they choose to do it? I'm not so sure. As things sit right now at the wide receiver spot, I've got more short-term concerns than long-term concerns between CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, who's probably not going to be ready in time for week one, plus third-round pick Jalen Tolbert. If you trade for Debo Samuel, you're going, wait, what are we doing with Tolbert? Hell, maybe you get really creative and ship off Tolbert as part of it to make the numbers work. But Tolbert is an unknown. I am excited about him. He was my favorite pick this year by the Cowboys. If Tolbert becomes a Michael Gallup caliber player, we're all really excited. I don't anticipate anybody on this roster being the type of player and playmaker that Debo Samuel is. The other issue that I think we have to discuss beyond how do you make the receiving game numbers work is this. Do we trust Kellen Moore to maximize Debo Samuel? We've seen flashes of the creative play. And I love that when it happens, but it's not consistent from that standpoint. That's a red flag for me and the Cowboys and a potential Debo Samuel trade. Now, coming up next, we'll look at a potentially more viable target via trade or even the free agency market in Deion Jones. Before we break that down, I am once again asking you to subscribe to us here at the Cowboys Report. We are 234 subs exactly away from 129,000. And we have the numbers that show about 47% of you watch this show and aren't subscribed, which is crazy to me. Let's get you in the fold. That way you get a notification every time there's a video here on our channel. Hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Let's look now at Deion Jones. As The Athletic reported, I think it was yesterday afternoon, morning, whatever it was, that the Falcons are likely going to move on from their former potentially former star linebacker. Money's a factor here. Make note of the cap savings with the release. It's $1.04 million. With a trade, 10.68. It would have to be a post-June 1st move. We'll explain that momentarily as the contract and a rebuilding Falcons organization is at the crux of everything here. So who do you think is the more likely targets of the potential trades, acquisitions, free agents, whatever phrase you want to use there? Is it Deion Jones? Type in DJ. Or is it Debo Samuel? Type in DS in the comments right now. Here's what The Athletic reported on Deion Jones. Some NFL teams have held off on cutting or trading players until June to maximize the 2022 salary cap hit by pushing dead money into 2023. Count Jones is almost certain exit from Atlanta among the casualties. He has paid far too much money for far too little production and clearly isn't part of the team's long-term rebuilding plan. Trading Jones after June 1st will be the team's preference. It would transfer the most financial guarantees to Jones' next team, and the dead money hit to Atlanta would only be $5.34 million. Another team uh, to take Jones' guaranteed salary of $13.64. Base and bonuses won't be easy, even for a low draft pick. Now, I would push back on bad production from Deion Jones. It's not, it's not bad there, but this kind of sounds like the Amari Cooper situation, doesn't it? Team doesn't want the player. Other teams know that. That drives down the value pretty substantially. So a pretty similar trade idea here, a fifth-round pick. And maybe what the ideal outcome here is 
is that the Falcons eat some of the contract in order to make it easier to save more money because his base salary this year, by the way, is fully guaranteed as we get into more in depth in a minute and allowing the team to still save money and get a draft pick back. That might be the perfect blend of all that balancing act for the Falcons and Jones and a hypothetical new team, including the Cowboys. So a fifth round pick seems pretty fair if they eat some of the money as well. So you've got options hypothetically here to potentially acquire Deion Jones. How would you be okay getting him? Do you want him no matter what? Type in T for trade. Do you only want to sign him if he's cut? Well, type in S for sign. Or do you not want him whatsoever? Type in P for pass. Now, Jones' last four years haven't been bad production. Uh, the interceptions did dip. Tackles for loss have always been pretty consistent, anywhere from 8 to 11 the last three years, over 100 tackles. I think he's still a good football player. I do think he is beginning to show signs of decline. Two areas I have concerns about Deion Jones. Missed tackles, 17 last year for the Falcons, which isn't like a, a terrible number, but it is a little bit high. It, even though with the high volume, you wouldn't be too worried about that front there. The completion percentage is high. He's not a premier coverage player. But I also know this, that Deion Jones had his best career and his best production and was at his best with Dan Quinn. Now, the contract is important here. In the event he is traded, I am under the impression that his new team would owe him 10 $0.68 million for this year. Now, there is a roster bonus that was paid uh, in March, mid-March. That isn't always actually paid out on that date, so there could be a case in which the new team would owe that. It's about $4 million uh, of his roster bonus had been guaranteed and allegedly paid out by that time frame. Might not be the case, so it could be more like in the $14.68 million range. But again, you could potentially get the Falcons to eat some of that money and make it more palatable than a team paying Deion Jones even a non-guaranteed $13.14 million. That's a lot of money for, a, for an off-ball linebacker, as we've learned in recent years. Now let's look at the need side of it here for the Cowboys. We all love Micah Parsons, understandably so. I want to give him pass rush reps. Lane Van Der Esch, super cheap contract. You are not paying LVE to be a starter. And I think I speak for many of us when I say we are excited about Jabril Cox. And I am excited to see what Cox can do this year for the Cowboys in the event he's healthy. He's also a fourth-round pick who was hurt all of last year. So he is a bit of an unknown as it relates to just how good he's going to be. Am I hopeful he has a breakout year? Absolutely. If he doesn't, am I, am I very concerned about this linebacker depth chart? Hell yeah. I would love to get another reliable piece. Now, one last noteworthy tidbit before we sign off today. The Athletic also implied there were leadership issues and that Jones was not being a great mentor, a great leadership presence for the younger players. That is a red flag because I want good leaders, good veteran leaders in my locker room. In theory, better football team would help that, but it's, that is a red flag I want to mention. I'll also say this, this last note. I would trust Dan Quinn more than anybody to know if that would really be a red flag. So I have a lot of interest in Deion Jones. He's much more obtainable, I believe, than Debo Samuel, and that's definitely an actual name that might be worth keeping an eye out for, even in the offseason, which the Cowboys have done next to nothing.